Okay. So welcome everyone. Thank you for being here with us for the second series of uh, the speaker series. Um, we have today our topic today is how to maintain physical and social health. Um, I have a voice. Let me see. Okay. Um, yeah, so the topic today is how to maintain physical, mental, and, and social health in eating. Uh, and uh, our speaker today is Jill Moriak. Uh, Jill is our, also our, our box coach. And uh, welcome, <laughs> welcome, Jill. It's a honor for us to have you here. Uh, Jill is uh, has a, a bachelor's in uh, psychology. She's also a personal trainee, specialist, exercise, nutrition coach, mindful movement, active, aging coach, kickboxing, boxing, group fitness instructor. She's everything. I wear a few different She's hats. healthy and, and joyful and uh, we love her. So welcome, Jill. Welcome, everyone. I hope you enjoyed the presentation. We'll have a Q&A um, at the end. And uh, Jill, the mic is all yours. Welcome. Wonderful. Thank okay. you. Thanks so much. All right. Well, welcome, everybody. And I'm, I hope you can hear me. <laughs> Hi, Douglas. I remember you from the last time. You yes, we can listen. hear you. Yeah. Yeah. And, 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 I'll, and I'll see you next Monday on, on uh, 11, um, for sure, in person in the clinic if you're there. I don't know. Uh, Douglas, sorry. I'm not working. I'm not working Monday and Tuesdays. But. Um, yeah, we can, for sure, another day we can see. And I would like to ask everyone now to mute their my, the microphone and, and you can come and participate at the end and the Q&A. Okay, thank you, everyone. Thank you, welcome everyone for joining in. Giuliani, do you know how many people are here today? I can only see Douglas and you and me. I don't know who else is here. Maybe she's muted now. Oh, I think she is. All right, well, that's okay. I'm gonna wear my glasses so I can see what I've got on here. I know Douglas has been here for the ser the first series when I did the talk, but maybe it's nice to have a little reminder. Uh, hopefully there's some new people here as well, and maybe some of you were here on the last one. So welcome. I'm so glad you're here and you're interested. In also, so sorry, sorry to... That's okay. Sorry to interrupt you. I just wanna remind that this uh, presentation is being recorded and it will be available later on on youtube wonderful now giuliani do you, oh sorry you've just muted again do you know how many people are here or who's here only uh, for, uh us for now but okay. for sure like in like about five minutes i think people will start to call in okay dial in. a couple more minutes is it just but, you and douglas uh i think we can wait two more minutes yes okay. Yeah, with my pet, my family, and my little bubble, that's okay. But you've got the you've got the server, you've got the front of the house hostess, you've got you know all the the cook staff. My son is a cook, so I know like he's gone ahead. He got double vaccinated as soon as he could, right? Because he felt like he needed to for his job. But not everybody is able to do yeah, that. Yeah, no. Yeah. The cook staff are usually very close to each other. They're really close and they're wearing their masks in that heat. It's crazy. So we often forget about that part of it. But yeah. I mean, yeah, I, I agree. Like we could have been doing more outdoor exercising and we could have all emerged from pandemic being a whole lot healthier if the government gave us some good um, direction regarding nutrition and exercise right outside to help us deal with that fear because it was scary. We didn't know what the heck was going on. and. We're all like our health is huge, and like that's a primal instinct to be, you know, really scared when we don't know what what we can do and what we can control. But we could have controlled what we were eating. We could have controlled getting outside and fresh air and dealing with the stress that way. But yeah, I think the barber shops could have been open the whole almost the whole time because that wasn't that much of a risk, especially keep cleaning all their equipment all the time. Yeah, but uh, you have to be pretty. I just, I just right? free. I just, I mean, I just got my hair cut last week and like my hairdresser had to be really close to me the whole time. And yeah. like I was comfortable at that point and so was he, but when you don't know how transmissible it is, it's a little harder. Even, I mean, outside, I know some hairdressing places set up 
seats outside. So you're not going to do oh, yeah? you're watching. But yeah, they were doing outside. I didn't go to any, but I heard about it. Cool. Well, should we, it doesn't, we're at 11 uh, right now. Should we yeah. get started? And then it looks like we're about to get started on the yeah, real Yeah, I think we, we should. Mm -hmm. we, all, we, are, we are in six right now and um, it's okay. We're we in six? We have six people. Welcome, Jill. Yeah. Good. Yeah. So, there's some people here on phones as well? No. Oh, okay. We have, it's uh, Paula, Faria, uh, Courtney, Teresa, Douglas, you and myself. Oh, okay. But, so um, yeah. All right. So why don't I get started? And then because we have a nice, small, intimate group, we could always, you could, could put up your hand or like put a little flag yeah. up. And if I, like, it's a, it's a lot of me talking, but if you guys want to stop and ask questions along the way, we can, or if you want to like write down a question and then I've got a question and answer time at the end as well, because it's a lot. I'm right. going to cover basically eight essential habits that I feel are really important to maintain your physical, mental, and social health while we're actively aging. Um, and I'm going to go all over all of those. Some of them are really short and some are a whole lot longer. Okay. Right. Cool? All right. So. How to maintain physical, mental, and social health in active aging. All right, we'll click through here. So what is health and what does it mean to you? You don't have to answer that, but just kind of think about it, right? What is health? I'm gonna move my people, where can I move us? Let's move us over here. Okay, so according to the World Health Organization, health is a state of complete physical, mental, and social well-being, and not merely the absence of disease or infirmity, right? The enjoyment of the highest attainable standard of health is one of our fundamental rights as a human, uh, without distinction of race, religion, political belief, economic, or social condition. So um, when I was first asked to do this uh, talk, uh, I thought about breaking down each one, physical health, do a blurb, mental health, do a blurb, social health, do a blurb, but they're just so interconnected, I really needed to kind of combine all of them as we can go along. So they really are all interconnected. If you're not physically healthy, your mental health is going to suffer. If you're not socially connected with other people, your physical and your mental health is really going to suffer. And we all know that we've just been through this pandemic. So what factors influence our physical, mental, and social health while we're aging? And we're aging as soon as we're born, basically. I have to find a way to get this out of the way. Let's see. Reach our, reach, I'm going to just minimize, hide that. There we go. Research has identified several habits that affect our physical, mental, and social health as we get older. Can you guys still hear me and see me? Absolutely. Okay, okay, good, thanks. Ideally, you'll have already been practicing some healthy habits throughout your entire life, but even if you haven't, it's never too late to start taking proactive steps to help maintain and even improve your health. So even if you're 60, you're 70, you're 80, it's never too late. So just small lifestyle changes can have a big impact and adopting even just a few new healthy habits can start you on the right track. That's good news. So healthy habit number one, and this is a big one, make exercise and activity regular habits. So whether you love it or hate the thought of it, regular exercise and physical activity are good for you, period, no matter what, hands down. <laughs> no matter your health and physical abilities, you can gain a lot by staying active. In fact, studies show that taking it easy, being a couch potato is risky. So often a lack of activities is more to blame than age when older people lose the ability to do things on their own and can also lead to more visits to the doctor, more hospitalizations and more use of medicines for a variety of illnesses. So my motto is use it or lose it. Scientific evidence suggests that people who exercise regularly not only live longer, they live better. We don't wanna just live a long life when we're really, um, unable to do anything for ourselves, right? We wanna live a good, strong, independent life. Uh, so being physically active, doing everyday activities that keep your body moving, such as gardening, walking the dog, taking the stairs instead of the elevator, cleaning actively, all those things, gardening, they can help you continue to do the things you enjoy and stay independent as you age, because that's my goal. <laughs> I think it's most people's. So there's a huge th list of things that just staying active can help you with. So I'm gonna read a few of them here. So uh, staying active can keep and improve your strength so you can stay independent. It can give you more energy to do the things you wanna do and just reduce that feeling of fatigue that a lot of people just wake up with and can't shake. 
It can help you improve your balance and decrease your risk of falls and injuries from falls. It can help you sleep, which is really good because sleep is often elusive as we get older. It can help us feel in more control of our lives. It can help us reach or maintain a healthy weight and reduce our risk of gaining more weight. It can help us control our blood pressure. It can boost our mood and reduce our stress and depression. It can possibly improve or maintain some aspects of our cognitive function, such as our ability to shift quickly from task to task, to plan an activity and be able to ignore irrelevant information. Being active can even help us manage and prevent certain chronic conditions, such as arthritis, stroke, type two diabetes, breast and colon cancer, osteoporosis, that's when our bone density is decreasing, high blood pressure and heart disease. Isn't it amazing that we can control some of those things? I think that's pretty important. Uh, according to the CDC, that's the Center for Disease, uh, any exercise at all is better than none, right? So brisk walking, especially with a friend or a partner for added social interaction is a great form of exercise. And that includes in your wheelchair too, right? Getting out and about. So there are four main types of exercise that everyone should include to gain the most health benefits. And then when I saved this PDF, this video didn't want to reload again. So I have it down here somewhere. I'm hoping I can play it. There we go. And this is from Fit for Life. So it's going to describe it a little bit. I kind of Both zipped through the beginning. And exercise are extremely important for older people in terms of their independence. And it's not only just independence in the sense of function. Can you raise the volume? Everything you want to do, but it's also this is his... living, meaning that they get to stay in their homes. I can't. You have to do it on your end. Live where they want to live I don't do think I can. Oh, wait. I can, sorry. I thought I had it up. active on a regular basis is one of the healthiest things you can do for yourself as we get old. Is that loud enough now? Not right now, but I turned, I muted where it was at. Here, I'll play again. It's on max now. We all want to keep doing their Better. things we enjoy. And there are many ways exercise and physical activity can help us do that. It's important to do all four types of exercise. Endurance, strength, balance, and flexibility. Here's why. Many people would like to be able to walk further without getting out of breath so quickly. And endurance exercises can improve the health of your heart, lungs, and your overall circulatory system. Activities that boost your endurance include things like swimming, biking, and brisk walking. Improving your endurance will make it easier for you to do everyday activities like pushing your grandchildren on swings, gardening, raking leaves, or dancing. And you won't get out of breath so soon. If you're having trouble climbing stairs, you can strengthen your muscles with resistance exercises. Lifting hand weights and using resistance tubes are ways to improve muscle strength. And so are exercises like these. That's using Side resistance bands. Yep. The overhead arm raise. That's a shoulder press. And the hand grip. Squeezing a ball. The stronger your muscles are, the easier it is to do everyday activities like climbing stairs, standing up from a seated position, lifting groceries, and opening jars. Some older adults say it's getting harder to look over their shoulder when they back out of the driveway. Flexibility exercise is a way to become more limber, improve your range of motion, and have more freedom of movement. You can try doing things like yoga, shoulder and arm stretch, or a back stretch. Being more limber will make it easier to do everyday activities like putting on a sweater, bending down to tie your shoes, swinging a golf club, or putting on a seatbelt. If you're feeling unsteady on your feet, you can improve your balance with balance exercises. Simple balance exercises you can do include standing on one foot, 
the balance wall and heel to toe. Besides helping avoid a fall, balance exercises can help with such everyday activities as walking safely on an even sidewalk and standing on tiptoe to reach items on the top shelf. So all individuals who engage in regular structured exercise or increased physical activity gives themselves an opportunity to improve their quality of life. So the end quote says, stay independent with regular exercise. And this is from go for life, um, hashtag fit for function. And I will go back to the presentation. Which one was I using? This one. There we go. Okay. So exercise and physical activity during COVID-19. So be safe during COVID-19. Some of these activities may not be possible under current restrictions. Um, so you can reach out to your local senior center like Vibrant Health or a gym to see if they offer online exercise classes or exercise videos, but the gyms have just reopened in most places. So um, if you're comfortable, you can go back. Um, to adhere to CDC safety guidelines, it's recommended that people do virtual activities like a group call with friends or family. You guys know all this part. Okay, so cardiorespiratory exercise, otherwise known as endurance or aerobic exercise. So we heard a little bit about that in the video. Uh, it helps to increase your breathing and your heart rate and improves the health of your heart, your lungs, and your whole circulatory system. So doing regular endurance sessions of just 10 minutes, right, can also boost chemicals in your body that can improve your mood and your mental health. And that's that mental connection too. If you wanna keep up with your grandchildren during a trip to the bar, park, dance to your favorite songs at a family wedding, rake the yard, then start adding in some more cardio exercise. See if you can build up to at least 150 minutes a week. That's about two and a half hours doing activities that just make you breathe a little harder. That doesn't mean you have to go running for 12 hours a week. Just try to be active throughout your day to reach this goal and avoid sitting for long periods of time. Remember, you can break the time into just 10 minute chunks of exercise. It's actually recommended that you're not like a weekend warrior where you just save it all for the weekend. You're sitting all day you know, at work or at home and then you go crazy on the weekend or even sitting all day and then working out really hard for an hour at night. You're better off to you know, set, a, set an alarm and get up every 30, 45 minutes and just move around, right? That's way more, more important for your circulation. And then try and get some good cardio in for you know, brisk walk for at least 10 minutes. So some activities you can do, brisk walking, jogging, yard work, mowing and raking, dancing, put on some music, dance in your chair, dance up and around. I know that's one of my favorites. Swimming, so good. Aqua fitness, uh, that's doing some exercises in the pool. Biking, climbing stairs or hills, playing tennis or basketball, cardio fitness classes. There's lots of those things. I know like I offer, I offer two cardio fitness classes a week that are chair fit, low impact. Um, that work quite well with people's schedules and they're online, which is handy. Um, and then when you get a copy of this, I've got, a, I've included a link that uh, for some exercise videos you could check out at home. Okay, great. Yeah, so for strength training, that's your next one. So we've got cardio and then we've got strength. As we age, we slowly lose a little bit of our lean muscle mass and bone density each year if we're not actively replacing them. And in fact, as early as age 30, we start to lose about 5% of our muscle mass with each passing decade if we're not doing something about it. And your muscle strength can make a big difference in your life. Strong muscles and bones help you stay independent and make activities of daily living, your ADLs, feel easier, just like getting up from a chair or a toilet. We gotta be doing that, right? Climbing stairs, picking up grandchildren, getting in and out of cars, carrying and putting away groceries. Think about picking up, carrying, putting them up on shelves. So you can replace your lost muscle and bone density with strength training. You can lift weights, use your own body weight to build muscle all over, um, and in turn also boost your metabolism, right? The way that you burn calories, um, helping you maintain a healthy weight. Because lean muscle um, burns more calories than fat does. Uh, so it's important to add in a consistent strength training program. It'll help you uh, improve your balance, decrease your risk of falling, uh, keeps your core, your legs, and your hip muscles strong, decreases your body fat, which can also help decrease your risk for some long chronic diseases like diabetes, heart disease, anything metabolic. It's going to improve your posture, improve your coordination. 
It boosts your self-esteem, mental health connection there. Increase your functional ability, just your functional fitness to do everything in life that you want to be able to do, your ability, your mobility, and in turn, that improves your independence. Disclaimer alert, always get clearance from your primary healthcare provider before you begin a new program, but most older adults and people with disabilities are able to do modifications of most exercises and everyone can benefit from some form of strength training. The key is to start slowly, learn the technique, technique properly so you avoid injury and progress slowly. And you can always check with a certified personal trainer or a physiotherapist for more information. So my one of my favorite quotes is start where you are, use what you have and do what you can, right? You don't need a fancy gym outfit or a gym membership or expensive equipment. Water bottles can take the place of light dumbbells. You can buy TheraBands, you know, the stretchy rubber bands at dollar stores these days. That's where I buy some of mine. Bands are a fantastic option to add more resistance, uh, but body weight activities are just fine to build strength and endurance as well. So I've got 12 of my top exercises for actively aging adults. Uh, one is step up, so just using stairs, stepping up if you can, or if you're seated in a wheelchair, lifting your leg up and touching down if you're able to use your legs. Squats, uh, like a sit to stand. Lunges, mm -hmm. that's when one foot's apart than the other. Shoulder presses, rows where you're pulling something, a chest press or a push up. You can do modifications there, you don't have to be down on the floor. Wood chopper is that side to side turn, really good for core. A plank, again, it doesn't have to be on the floor. It can be a like kitchen counter. Torso turn and twist, really good for rotation. Um, back extensions or good mornings or band pull aparts. Tennis ball squeeze and just even carrying bags of groceries on one side or both, right? That's a farmer's carry. All are gonna help build. So any amount of physical activity is beneficial, but the more often you can complete strengthening exercises, for all of your major muscle groups, the more effective the training will be. Um, and again, I've got another link here for when you guys get this, you could click on it or like type it in and throw it in your Google search uh, for some, some videos of strength training you could do. They should be challenging. You should feel that you can't complete more than eight to 10 repetitions for, per set. If you can do like 20, then your, your weight is maybe a little too light. Work up to two or three sets of exercises that are best for you. Certified personal trainer or physiotherapist could help you learn your proper technique and which exercises are best. Muscle strengthening sessions should last about 10 to 15 minutes or more and should be completed at least twice a week. Ideally you get up to three, but you gotta start somewhere, right? Look at where your baseline is and go from there. Next one, I know I told you this is a long habit, right? The other ones will be faster. Balance training exercises can help prevent falls a major cause of disability in older adults, right? It's no fun to fall. We don't bounce like we used to when we were little. Uh, in general, balance begins to decline around age 55. So when the number of nerve cells in our vestibular or balance system start to decrease. As vision also starts to worsen, this can significantly affect our balance. On top of this, our proprioception, so that's our body position in space awareness, also declines with age and it can slow our response to changes in position. Um, like if we're suddenly losing our balance, if we're bumped, it's harder to deal with that. Each of these factors contributes to poor balance and a higher risk of falling. There is good news though, by adding in just a few minutes of daily balance exercises, you can significantly improve your balance, strength, coordination, and stability. Many studies show um, significantly improved balance after just six to 12 weeks of balance training. And I find it often happens far before that too with my clients. Uh, balance activities can be done anytime. You don't have to warm up or stretch first. A few balance exercises to include, there's classes like Tai Chi, foot taps to a step or a cone where you're standing on one leg and touching, standing or seated knee lifts like marching, lateral side stepping, sit to stand, single leg balance stand, you can hold on and then try and let go, stand on one leg, standing and walking with slow head turns side to side, it's a lot harder than it looks, heel toe walk, almost like you're walking on a balance beam, three way leg raises, you lift to the front, you lift to the side, you lift to the back, narrow stance reaches, so you're standing tall with your feet close and you're reaching up, also tricky, little mini lunges, 
tandem or semi-tandem stance. So that's where your one foot is in front of the other one and standing still. That's tougher than it looks too. Heel and toe raises and step ups. Those are, these are all some of my favorites I use with my clients. And then I've got a link to uh, balance training, oops, balance training exercise videos you could try at home. And also there's a compilation of great balance exercises from two of my favorite online physiotherapists, Bob and Brad. I don't know if any of you guys check, him out, check them out. There's a YouTube link there. So basically any amount of physical activity is beneficial, but the closer you get to including balance activities every day, the longer functional benefits are maintained and the more likely you are to see improvements. So again, you don't just do one and then forget about it for two months and then go, right, I gotta remember to do that. Oh. What's that, Douglas? Yeah, that's pretty high. <laughs> and he looks older. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, for this stretch. Yeah. Flexibility. I mean, he's working hard on this, obviously. It's pretty good. So flexibility, I, th I thought this would be a good picture to show. It's the, if anybody, those of you who are on the phone, I've got a picture of a, an older gentleman. So a senior with his leg up on a kind of a big cement area, but it's up really high. So he's up above his belly button area stretching. Flexibility is the ability of the muscles and tendons and ligaments to lengthen and stretch in response to movement and allow a joint to move through its proper range of motion. So benefits of stretching. Stretching allows for greater movement in your joints and improves your posture. It helps to release muscle tension and soreness, you know, the tight necks we get, reduces your risk of injury, can also help increase your circulation, your muscle control, decrease pain and improve your balance and coordination. They all go hand in hand, right? So stretching guidelines. Older adults should try to stretch the major muscle groups for at least 10 minutes and at least two days a week. If you could do a little bit of stretching daily, even better. Perform flexibility exercises on all days that cardiovascular or resistance training exercise occurs if possible. So it's great to include that. Stretching tips, take a deep breath and slowly exhale into your stretch. Your stretch is better with that out breath. Hold each stretch for about 30 seconds to give the muscles enough time to relax. Don't bounce when you stretch as this increases your risk of injury. Only stretch until you feel tension in the muscle, not to the point of pain. And always warm up before stretching by moving around for five to 10 minutes, dancing, going for a walk. You don't wanna try and stretch cold muscles that could lead to injury. So these are a few of my favorite stretches to include in your fitness routine. So you get a shoulder and upper arm stretch, a chest stretch, ankle stretch, you can do point and flex, circles, hamstring stretch, so that's the muscles at the back of your leg, quadricep stretch, that's the muscles in your thigh, a hip stretch, you know where your hips are, lower back stretch, so that's a torso turn, really nice for the low back, Neck stretches. Uh, maintaining mobility of your neck is really important for posture and activities such as driving. We have to be able to turn and look for our blind spots. So be sure to include these stretches, chin to chest and to the ceiling, head turn side to side and head tilts, ear to shoulder, ear to, ear to shoulder. Those are all good. Overall takeaway for exercise and activity. This is long habit, right? <laughs> Research has shown that even less than recommended exercise can bring health benefits. So remember, it's better to do a little bit every day than nothing at all, right? Progress over perfection. In fact, the most important thing is to find something that you can keep doing. So in order to be consistent with adding exercise and physical activity into your daily life, choose things that you enjoy, whether it's gardening, playing tennis, kicking a soccer ball around with your grandchildren or something else. Choose activities you want to do, not ones you feel are just chores because you won't do them, right? Walking is relatively easy for many, Otherwise, classes or structured courses often help older adults stick with an exercise program. I know myself, I do better when I've, I'm training groups of clients. It keeps me active too. It's harder to keep yourself motivated sometimes. Okay, finally, healthy habit number two. I promise all the other ones won't be as long. So the first one was the exercise, the four different kinds. Healthy habit number two to maintain your health, don't smoke or quit smoking if as long as you can, right? To lower your risk of cancer and heart disease. If you're a current smoker, you really should try to quit as a matter of urgency. According to smokefree.gov, the health benefits of quitting smoking include lowering your cholesterol, lowering your blood pressure and your heart rate, 
much lower risk of cancer, diabetes, and lung damage. You'll have stronger bones, stronger muscles, and a stronger immune system. Fortunately, even after an older adult has developed smoking-related health problems, quitting will reduce your symptoms and your chance of a premature death. One study found that quitting smoking between ages 55 to 64, I don't know why those are the ages specifically, added at least four years to one's life expectancy. We know quitting smoking is hard since nicotine is physically and psychologically addictive and only three to six people um, who try to quit are, on their, are able to succeed on their own, but there's medications and counseling um, that have been proven to help you quit smoking. And when you combine these correctly, you can usually increase your chances of, of quitting successfully for at least, at least by 30% more. People need to try to quit, uh, try to quit a few times. So don't let a past failure to quit stop you from trying again. Talk to your doctor about options to help you quit. And you just keep thinking about how important it is for your health to get that in. and your pocketbook, right? Smoking is expensive. All right, healthy habit number three, follow a healthy, well-balanced diet. This is huge. No matter your age or your previous eating habits, it's never too late to change your diet and improve the way you think and feel. Improving your diet now can help you to live longer and stronger. Good nutrition can boost your immunity. That's really important during a pandemic. <laughs> Fight illness causing toxins. Keep your weight in check, really important. Reduce your risk of heart disease. Reduce your risk of stroke, high blood pressure, type two diabetes, bone loss, and cancer, right? Just by eating better. Along with physical activity, a balanced diet can also contribute to enhanced independence as you age. It makes a huge difference what you're fueling your body with. It's gonna help you sharpen your mind. People who eat fruit, leafy vegetables, and fish and nuts uh, packed with omega-3 fatty acids may be able to improve their focus and decrease the risk of Alzheimer's disease. An antioxidant-rich green tea, you know, may, and that's easy to get, may also enhance your memory and your mental alertness as you age. That's easy to add in. Feel better. It will, wholesome meals can give you more energy and help you look better, resulting in a boost to your mood and your self-esteem. It's all connected. When your body feels good, you feel happier inside and out. There's that interconnectedness again. Challenges to healthy eating and maintaining weight while aging. We know it's not always easy, right? Changes in home life, such as suddenly living alone, you know, if you lose a spouse um, or having trouble getting around, perhaps, um, and then I've got an, oh, I need to move my little box so I can see. You, these are kind of possible solutions. Perhaps seek assistance from family or friends or even an outside meal delivery agency. Uh, poor health can be a challenge. It can make it harder for you to cook or feed yourself. Again, maybe family, friends, or a meal delivery service could help. Also talk to your doctor or, or occupational therapist for ideas to help. Uh, certain medicines can change how food tastes, make your mouth dry, or take away your appetite. Again, talk to your doctor or pharmacist about any changes and options for meds. Um, that sometimes limited or decreased income um, can mean that you don't have as much money for food. But frozen foods are less expensive than fresh and they're just as healthy. Um, I'm not talking packaged processed frozen foods, I'm talking frozen veggies and fruit. <laughs> Uh, legumes, so things like lentils, chickpeas, black beans, you know, cans or bagged, bags really low cost, but cans are pretty cheap too. They're extremely healthy and low cost. You could always try and partner with friends or use a food bank. Um, decreased sense of smell or taste can make, a cha make it a challenge too. So you can add herbs and spices to help, not just salt. Problems chewing or swallowing can make a difference. Again, check with your dentist, right? Properly fitting dentures, any dental issues, or your doctor for help on that one. So to stay healthy as you age, aim to eat foods that provide lots of nutrients without a lot of extra calories, such as lots of fruits and colorful vegetables. How many people eat veggies and fruits every day? Hopefully you guys all have at least one, right? Choose different types uh, with bright colors, right? Aim to eat the rainbow, literally, and include dark leafy greens, such as kale, spinach, and broccoli. Again, you can buy that frozen. I buy bags of frozen chopped kale, easy to add into anything. Add, eat veggies at every meal. They're also great as a snack with hummus. You don't have to have that, you know, deep calorie Caesar dressing. If you've ever had hummus before, it's, it's um, great protein and really yummy with veggies. Great way to get them in. 
whole grains, like non-instant oatmeal, right? Not that sugary packaged stuff, whole wheat bread, whole wheat pasta, brown rice, and quinoa. Um, if you are gonna eat carbohydrates, the less active you are, you don't need as many grains. The more active you are, you do need some more carbohydrates like this. Um, but if you do choose to eat them, um, go with more of the whole grain, that sort of thing. Whole grain sourdough, quinoa is awesome. Uh, if you're going for calcium, vitamin D, any sort of dairy, I don't do a lot of dairy, but some is really good, like plain Greek yogurt. You want to stay away from any yogurt that has sugar added to it. It's just basically like eating pudding. There's so much sugar in anything that's flavored. So look for the plain stuff and you can add in your own berries and nuts and seeds. It makes it yummy that way. Skyre is another type of uh, kind of like a Greek yogurt. And it's also really high in protein, which is great. Uh, soy, almond, oat, or rice milk that has added vitamin D and calcium can also be really great for you. A little bit of dairy is fine. Some people find that um, it's more inflammatory for them. So if you have some inflammatory issues, you might want to look at decreasing your, your dairy and see how that goes. Um, adding in things like seafood, for example, sardines, salmon, um, other things like lean meats, poultry, eggs, and more plant-based options such as tofu, tempeh, and legumes such as lentils, black beans, chickpeas, um, really good healthy proteins for you. Trying to go with more of the, the healthy, um, you know where it's coming from and you can identify what source where it came from. Uh, less processed um, is really important. And we have, as we age, it's harder to uh, process protein and use it to turn into muscle. So we need to really pay attention that we're getting enough protein into our bodies every day. Uh, healthy fats, super important. Uh, a lot of people are afraid of fats because we've grown up hearing that fats make you fat. Well, certain fats do, like in potato chips, that kind of stuff. I know they're yummy, but um, we do need healthy fats, like the fats in olive oil, avocados, nuts and seeds, fatty fish, those kind of things. That's what we want to look for. Kind of the Mediterranean diet is, is proving to be pretty healthy for most people. We want to avoid empty calories. So these are foods with lots of calories, but very few nutrients, such as chips, candy, baked goods, soda pop, alcohol, those kind of things. We, you know, a little bit in moderation, you know, really plan those indulgences. We all, we don't want to live life without, you know, some fun stuff, but being aware that there's a time and place for them and try not to just eat those things mindlessly. Plan out when they are. And if you're going to have a cookie, make sure it's a good gourmet cookie and you savor it slowly. <laughs> Drink enough water. This is huge. So you don't get dehydrated. Some people, almost everybody loses their sense of thirst as they age, actually. And certain medications might make it even more important to have plenty of fluids. So tip, my tip is with all my clients is start your day with a big glass of water and keep a water bottle nearby to remind you to drink throughout the day. We want to aim for at least two, sometimes even three liters of water. You got to start where you are. If you hardly drink any water at all, start adding in a little bit more, a little bit more, a little bit more. You can add like lemon or blueberries or cucumbers, anything like that to make it taste a little bit better if you like, but it's really important to drink water. Okay, healthy habit number four, and this is huge too, get enough sleep, good sleep. Studies have found that chronic poor sleep is linked to increased cardiovascular disease, increased levels of inflammation in the body, that's all that joint pain and you know fluid retaining, and decreased immune function. So being sleep deprived um, can cause fatigue, of course, we know that, which, but it can make it more, phys it more difficult to be physically active. It can also affect our mood and our food cravings, right? If the less sleep we have, the hungrier we are for junk food. On the other hand, getting enough good sleep is associated with better health, better well-being, and better immune system. This can be hard though, right? How do you get a good sleep? Well, you gotta start by creating healthy sleep habits. First, make your bed just for sleeping. It can be easy to answer your emails or texts in bed when you first get up. Um, or let me move this out of the way. Or uh, you can insist on staying in bed even when you're tossing and turning, but most sleep experts agree that you should use the bed only for sleep or sex, no computers, cell phones, or aimless tossing and turning allowed. If you find yourself unable to sleep after 15 minutes of trying, you should get up, walk around, do a calming activity like reading a book or occupy yourself in another way 
until you get sleepy again. Sometimes stretching. I find sometimes like deep breathing or just like going through a list of things in my head about all the things I'm grateful for can kind of help me relax. Second, create a good sleeping environment. This is important. Keep your bedroom dark with blackout shades if you can. And if you have a partner, get them on board with setting the thermostat lower, lower than you might think. According to most sources, between 60 to 68 degrees is preferred, with 65 degrees being optimal. You want a cooler environment for sleeping. It helps. Third, and probably most important, don't eat sugary, fatty foods or drink alcohol or caffeine too close to bedtime. These will steal your sleep. The fat will build up acid in your stomach and cause heartburn. The sugar will either keep you awake or wake you up a few hours into your sleep. Although people think, you know, having a glass of wine will help them fall asleep, it metabolizes quickly and has the same effect as sugar, only worse. It'll wake you up in the middle of the night. If you're hungry before bed, try sleep helpers like a tablespoon of almond or peanut butter on a little bit of whole wheat toast or just a spoonful of the butter. A few nuts or seeds or maybe half a cup of Greek yogurt. And do I really need to say why you should avoid caffeine? Just because it didn't keep you awake in your 30s doesn't mean it won't keep you awake now. I know I have to stop. I have no caffeine after like 12 o'clock now, uh, even by 11. I just can't do it. I don't get a good sleep. Bonus, anecdotal evidence has shown that a few minutes of calm, slow yoga or stretching before bed can also promote a good sleep. All right, healthy habit number five. We're getting there. Avoid chronic stress by prioritizing mindful self-care. This is big. Feeling chronically stressed has been linked to physical health problems such as cardiovascular disease. See a pattern here? <laughs> Insulin resistance, so that's an increased risk for diabetes, and decreased immune function. Research suggests that this may be because stress can accelerate your cellular aging, and it also may promote inflammatory markers in the body, so it's building up more inflammation. Common causes of stress um, in older adults include financial stress, relationship stress, loss of a loved one, work-related stress, and caregiving stress. But it's time to put yourself first. To reduce chronic stress, it's best to combine general approaches such as improving your sleep, adding and exercising, some meditation or relaxation strategies, going out for a walk in nature. I know that one really helps me. Getting out in the forest really makes a difference. Anything that helps you feel better, that can help you cope with your specific source of stress. And you have to do this on a regular basis, not just like once a week. Uh, likely you've spent many years caring for others and that's a beautiful thing, but you shouldn't feel guilty about putting your self-care at the top of your to-do list. So schedule daily time to meditate, be alone, spend time talking with a friend, reconnect with a creative passion, take a walk in nature, play an instrument, read a book, journal, dance to your favorite song, or whatever else fills you up and makes you feel good. Make it a priority to check in with yourself daily in a calm, mindful way. And that's tough sometimes. All right, healthy habit number six, practice good dental hygiene every day. This is something people forget about, I think. For, to protect your teeth and gums, the ADA, that's the American Dental Association, advises brushing your teeth twice a day, at least, with a soft bristled toothbrush, flossing daily, and regularly cleaning any dentures you may wear. Not only will your teeth and gums be healthier with this routine, but preventing inflammation in your mouth through good dental hygiene can actually help you manage other chronic inflammatory conditions, such as diabetes and heart disease, according to the American Academy of Periodontology. Ooh, that's a tough one. Yeah, so if you look after your gums and your teeth better, it decreases your risk for heart disease. I found that one out quite a while ago, but I don't think everybody knows that, that that's there's a big connection there. Wow. Yeah, healthy habit number seven, look after yourself. So schedule those appointments and stick to them. So uh, regular checkups with your doctor, your dentist, your eye doctor, and specialist healthcare providers are opportunities to catch problems early and treat them before they become bigger problems. And I know boys tend to be worse at this than girls, right? Oh yeah, it'll go away, it'll go away, right? And then it's a whole lot worse. So really do your checkups, make sure you're good, right? If you have any concerns, talk to your doctor. Review any medications you feel have any unwelcome side effects. I find pharmacists often have way more information than doctors so because they're the ones who have to stay on top of it. So if you really have any questions about your meds, check with your pharmacist pharmacist and make sure you're not getting drugs in different places. You want to have one who makes sure that they're all good and there's no weird contraindications. 
One of my tips is be sure to write down any concerns, changes in symptoms, or questions that come up between your appointments and bring that notebook with you to your appointments. Because usually even myself, right? You get there and go, right, right. What was I supposed to ask? I can't remember. So take a little notebook. Be aware of the following warning signs that you shouldn't ignore. If you have abrupt weakness or dizziness, if you feel constantly exhausted, um, a lot of us feel a little depressed during the pandemic, but if it's lasting and you just can't get out of it, that's a warning sign. If you have shortness of breath, pressure in your chest area, tingling or numbness, numbness, especially just on one side of your body that's unexplained, loss of balance or coordination kind of suddenly, they could indicate a major health problem and should be checked out by a medical professional as soon as possible, right? Get in and get those checked. Um, other signs, difficulty speaking or swallowing, unexplained excessive sweating, not like you're in a cardio class and you're sweating, uh, sudden vision loss or blurred vision, something could be going on with your eyes, um, marked swelling, so increased swelling, even when you haven't, you know, especially when you haven't had any recent injuries, rapid weight loss, right? We all usually want to lose a little bit of weight, but if there's weight loss with no real reason why, you want to check that out. Um, prolonged confusion and wounds that just never seem to heal. But with prompt medical attention, many people survive serious, even serious medical problems and even thrive afterward if they take it as an opportunity to double down on living healthfully, healthfully and meaningfully. All right, healthy habit number eight, get or stay socially active with friends and family and your community. The little picture that I have here for the people who can't see is be kind, let's look out for one another. Community is kindness. And that's been tough over the last year and a half of the pandemic. As people get older or when they have a disability, they often find themselves spending more and more time at home alone. But studies show that social, social isolation and loneliness are linked to a number of mental and physical health risks such as high blood pressure, heart disease, obesity, depression, cognitive decline, Alzheimer's disease, and more. But there is good news. Newer research finds that frequently interacting with others has many mental and physical benefits and can help protect you from these conditions. So what are the benefits of a socially active lifestyle? Well, you're less likely to develop certain diseases. Just by participating in hobbies and other social and leisure pursuits can lower your risk for developing health problems, including dementia. You're gonna have a longer lifespan. One study showed that older adults who reported taking part in social activities, such as playing games, belonging to social groups or traveling, or meaningful productive activities, such as having a paid or unpaid volunteer or gardening job, lived longer than people who did not. Uh, you're, you'll be happier and less depressed. Studies suggest that older adults who participate in activities that feel meaningful to them, like volunteering in their community, say they feel happier and healthier. Researchers think it might also have long-term benefits, lowering the risk of developing disability, dependent, dependency, and dementia in later life. Uh, being socially active can help you be better prepared to cope with a loss. Studies suggest that volunteering can help with stress and depression uh, when you lose a spouse or other loved one. Among people who experienced a loss, those who took part in volunteer activities felt more positive about their own abilities. And that just makes sense, right? You're connected with somebody else, they help you get through it. Um, it may help you to improve your thinking abilities. So another line of research is exploring how participating in creative arts might help people age well. Studies have shown that older adults' memory, comprehension, creativity, and problem-solving abilities improved after an intensive four-week, eight-session acting course. Kind of cool. Other studies are providing new information about ways that creative activities like music or dance, and I think drawing also, can help older adults. So what are some action steps we can take for boosting our social health? Well, we could start by trying to strengthen our relationships with our family, um, who we have still, brothers, sisters, children, nephews, nieces, or cousins. Since they're the people you've known for the longest time and have shared things with them for years, it's sometimes the easiest way to start. Not always if you don't love your family. <laughs> However, this more recent studies are showing that friends, not family, may make all the difference when it comes to reducing risk of dementia later in life. We get to choose our friends. We don't get to choose our family. No, oh, this has moved on me. 
can I remove that? No. Nope. One study showed that older adults who visited with friends almost daily were 12% less likely to develop dementia than those who only saw one or two friends every few months. It'd be interesting to see what comes out about all the Zoom companionship we've had versus in person. So some ideas to get out and about. You could visit a senior center and take part in its events and activities. You can go to Vibrant Health, right? Play cards or other games with friends online or in person now. Go to the theater, a movie, or a sporting event. We're starting to be able to do that. Visit your friends and your family. Try some different restaurants. Join a group interested in a hobby like knitting, hiking, bird watching, painting, quilting, pottery, fishing, wood carving, whatever you like. Reconnect with old friends through your high school or college alumni association. You can visit local museums. Many offer free group tours. Travel when it's safe to do so post lockdowns. You could travel with a group of older adults, such as a retiree group. Seeing new places can encourage interaction with others. Travel can expose you to different cultures and people and even within your own city or country. It can also get you physically active with walking, hiking and sightseeing. There are many different walking, cycling, hiking and touring groups that you could join. And I've included a link to some examples of different kinds of travel groups you could click on. I know one of, I had a client before who, she was in a wheelchair for her whole life and she went before the pandemic ended up going, I think on like a jungle cruise and like a skiing thing, like all kinds of cool stuff, you know, by joining these different groups. Uh, you could learn something new. You could take a cooking and art, dance, language, or computer class. You could get in touch with your local community college. Many offer free or discounted courses for older adults. You could form or join a book or a film club. You could try yoga, tai chi, or another new physical activity. Maybe join my boxing group that I'm gonna be doing with Giuliani uh, for Vibrant Health. Maybe September, I think we're looking at starting. Learn or relearn how to play a musical instrument. Lots of things we could do. You could join a committee or volunteer for an activity at your place of worship. I know Teresa was talking about that with her church. Uh, volunteer at a school, a library, a museum, or a hospital when it's safe to do so. Help with gardening at a community garden or park or start your own little group, right? Organize a park cleanup through your local recreation center or community association. You could sing in a community choral group or play in a local band or orchestra. You could take part in a local theater troupe, do some acting, get a part-time job, rediscover a favorite childhood pastime, or teach it to a new generation. There's all kinds of things you could do, like embroidery, photography, building models, chess, baking, woodworking, calligraphy, quilting, whatever you like to do that you could share with somebody else. You could also embrace social media just like we're doing now. For those who are homebound or unable to get out and about, online tools offer a way to stay connected with family and friends and even provide opportunity to meet new friends. That's what I'm doing here. This has been so important while we've been in lockdown here in Ontario over the last many, many, many months. So connecting over the internet can expand your world. Through social media, you can go online and see grandchildren or friends. Think of platforms such as Facebook, Zoom, and Skype, just like we're doing here with Zoom. Also, if you have a specialized interest in something like, for example, baseball, baseball card collecting, South Vietnamese cooking, asparagus styled pottery. I've got a picture of asparagus styled pottery up here or a cookie cutter collectors club, for example, anything kind of out there and want to find other people who like it. You might not find people locally, but online you could probably find a group who likes it. If you feel a bit wary of technology, you could ask a younger relative for help or take a course. Computers are a whole lot easier to deal with than they were 20 years ago. Thank goodness. And there's such an easy way to stay Sorry, connected I don't with have friends an and family. Sorry, it's my computer in the background. Uh, and find ways to get involved with things you're interested in. So tips for finding the right balance though. Everyone has different limits to the amount of time they can spend on social or other activities. What is perfect for one person might be too much for another. So be careful not to take on too much at once. You might start by adding one or two activities to your routine and see how you feel. And then you can always add more. Remember, participating in activities you enjoy should feel fun, not stressful. We're trying to make ourselves healthier, not more stressed. So let's review my top eight great healthy habits for active aging. So number one, make exercise and activity regular habits. That's your endurance, your strength, your balance, and your flexibility. Number two, don't smoke. 
or quit as you know as hard as you can keep trying to quit number three follow a healthy well-balanced diet avoid that sugar at all costs as much as you possibly can that's what leads to so many problems right um look at adding in healthy things rather than taking things away because when we feel deprived that's harder psychologically so think about ways you can add in healthy stuff and then you're going to be less likely to be craving the other things number four get enough good sleep right build those healthy sleep habits number five avoid chronic stress by prioritizing your mindful self-care look after yourself make yourself a priority practice good dental hygiene every day look after your teeth your mouth your gums and that will help you with your heart health as well look after yourself schedule your regular doctor appointments eye doctor dental all of those things those checkups and stick to them make it a commitment and find ways to get and stay socially active with your friends your family and your community so important right find that purpose in your life if any of you guys follow the blue zones and you know the the zones in the world where there's small pockets of the population who live to that nice ripe old age of into the hundreds in okinawa they talk about your ikigai that is your life's purpose what do you wake up for in the morning that makes you excited to get out of bed that's what we're all trying to find as we're aging as well right what is our purpose in life and what makes us feel good and how can we do good every day right and that will help us feel better physically mentally socially okay that was a lot of talking that was a long time question time now think about any questions you guys have and if you don't have any i will start you with what was something new you learned in this presentation and something else to think about is there a new habit or two that you would like to try adding into your regular routine and if you have any other questions you could ask me and i've got some more information you can check out um, on this part here and then you guys will get that i've listed we offer uh, my partner and I offer chair fit, low impact classes online every Monday and Thursday at 9.30 a.m. They're just $10 each. The first class is free. It's a free trial. And then I've got a little link on there. You could click on, the, on to find out more information about it. And there's actually a, a video link there too to a full one hour class that you could always try out. I've got my email on there. I don't know if anybody can take that down. It's jillmoretaylor at gmail.com. J-I-L-L. M-O-R-E-A-Y-L-O-R at gmail.com if you have any other questions that I don't answer here today. And our business is Action Speak Louder Fitness and Nutrition. So let's open it up. Anybody have any questions? We'll go back. I'm going to go to. Yeah. Oh, by the way, I've been, I've been approved for um, developmental services, even though I'm disabled, which is good. Because then I can get more things paid for, like going on travel trips and stuff like that. That's awesome, right? Finding all of those connections that can help you pay for those things, amazing, and open up other opportunities. Love yeah. It. Unfortunately, the government isn't smart enough to let me use the allowance as I see fit where I can take part of it and use it towards my ODSP needs instead. Because right now, if I want to get the wheelchair fixed, I got to always go through the worker, which is stupid. I know sometimes it's frustrating with those things, right? There's a lot of rules in place. And yeah, it can be tricky to navigate through that. Yes. So does anybody yep. have any questions about the presentation? Any of my eight habits or anything else you guys have discovered that I should add to mine? I have Actually, a I, find that I, I found that keeping doing the step or keeping up with your doctor's appointments, I'm finding that for the most part, very easy to keep. Good, that's awesome. And I, then I was Julie. never a smoker. Yeah, Giuliani, sorry, did you have something to say? It's amazing, amazing presentation, as always. I have a question. Certainly. What is your advice um, for people that keep trying to start exercise, but they don't have uh, energy or strength? So how can you find someone, find the courage to push through the resistance of starting exercise and be active again? That's an awesome question. A lot of people ask that question, right? They'll get started on something and then all excited and then they only do it once or twice and that's it. I think the trick is really yeah. doing something that you actually like to do. Because I know myself, if I'm making myself do something that I don't enjoy, I'm not going to do it. 
right? Because it's actually exercise and activity needs to be joyful too. It may, needs to make you feel good. You don't want to just make it a chore. So it doesn't have to be, I'm going to go to the gym and I'm going to do 10 sets of these dumbbell lifts and this and that. It doesn't have to be that. If you don't like the gym and you don't feel comfortable, right? It could be maybe you hire a trainer like me, you know, for one session to give you a little bit of an idea or you find, you know, I've, I'm in, I've included some links here of other exercise videos you could go and try um, to see if those are things you like. Uh, but just getting outside, going for a walk, um, trying to build your muscles in different ways. Like if, if hiking is what you love to do, do hiking. If dancing is what you love to do, do dancing. But trying to find ways to add those other little bits in. But part of it also is we're not gonna wake up with motivation to do exercise every day. That just doesn't happen, right? Um, but that we will, if we plan that we're gonna go to the dentist or we plan that we're gonna go to the, the doctor or we're gonna go get our hair done, I mean, that's fun. But these other things, we don't always like going to the dentist or doctor, but we know they're important for us. We schedule them in, we put them in our, our calendar and we do them, right? Whether we wanna do it or not, it's there because we know we have to. So sometimes with exercise to build that habit, you have to pick those most optimal times, put them in your day book and make it a non-negotiable that, okay, once this week, I'm going to do this and it's 30 minutes or it's 10 minutes. And that's what's going to happen. And then you just start building on it gradually. So you just start with one, right? Just think 1% better in your exercise and movement, 1% better in your food, 1% better in your social connection, just a little bit. It's progress. It's not perfection. So many people have that. I mean, I can, I'm guilty of that myself, right? Perfection is not what we want. We want progress. Um, it's tough. If that all or nothing attitude won't do it. It's like, oh, I missed my workout today. I won't do anything then. Well, just go for a little walk or do some stretching or try some balance exercises or just do some sit to stands. Literally, like you're working on some bench here. You're working on stand up, sit down, stand up, sit down. Or oh. you're working on knee lifts or you're working on some twists or you're working on wood chops or just anything. Add in just a few minutes of moving your body and you will start to gradually have more energy and you'll feel more motivated to do it. It's just so hard to start when you're here, right? But if yeah. your baseline is here, just a little bit, just a little bit. You don't go from zero to 60. That's just not gonna yeah. happen. And I know like a lot of people, you, you do have to make the commitment to a class or a trainer to make it happen because they understand it's just not gonna work. But it, yeah. it depends on, you know yourself best. But sometimes just adding in a little bit, little bit, little bit, it's that habit that like it's a daily action that can lead to a habit. And then you just can keep it. That was a long mm -hmm. answer. Did that help? A good answer. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Yes. yes. Um, Teresa or Paula or is you? I thought it was a great presentation. Oh, good. Do you have any questions, Teresa? Um, I, no, I don't actually, but no, I don't. Okay. But yeah, no, excellent. Good, I threw a lot in there. Like I said, I could have talked for hours. But, and um, I'm going to, on our website, I'm going to record like video of my top balance exercises, my top strength training and all of those things. So then you'd be able to like download those and, and look at them and try them. I just have all of this, yeah, that yeah. But that might right. be helpful to you, yeah. Not there yet, but they will be there. Anybody else have any questions? Anything new you learned? Uh, Paula Faria would just say great presentation. Love all the information. Yeah. Wonderful. Wonderful. So are you, are you going to set up a, besides having the videos put for this course, I mean, are you going to also have a support website so all the links can just be found on there with them? Because you know, YouTube, on YouTube videos, you can't, just because the link is there, you can't just click on it. Yeah. I think Giuliani said at the beginning though, right? And Giuliani, you can confirm. Yeah, it will be available. All of these into like a, a little book package. Mm -hmm. for yeah. people. And then, although the link will be like, if you can get it online, then you could click on the link. Otherwise, if it's an in a, like a hard copy package that you pick up at the center, then you just have to look at it and put it into your computer. And then you yeah. Have yeah. Actually, the best place to do it is to have a YouTube video and then you have a section because you have a website with the with, with the links to the YouTube videos and everything, all the everything can be there. Like, like in some in the presentations, you can just download them, view them, 
mark them then you can mark them up mark them up the way you wish you know what i mean that's perfect yeah exactly. yeah this is what you, we are planning to thank you douglas you are you have great ideas exactly what we are thinking and thank you thank you everyone uh do and you have any more other, questions one more, one more thing the other thing is if you had the, the support website up and running before the course started it means even if after i've read or watched the, the presentation if i want to get something from it right away i could just go onto the web get it even though the video is not online yet you know what i mean yeah yeah okay thank you but uh so we, we are running uh, uh out of the time now but thank you everyone for participating again thank you jill you are amazing you, thanks for this great presentation I will see all all of you next <laughs> next Tuesday, and okay. uh, um, again. And I'll, you, and I'll see you online, Giuliani, Friday. Sure, and uh, all presentations will be available on YouTube. Thank you, and this is uh, the project uh, from New Horizons um, grant, um, and uh, we. We are almost done with the series number two and series number three and the last that is the last series is coming soon. Thank you everyone. Please and invite your friends topics? and family. Are we, gonna, are we gonna have new topics in series three? The same topics, same topics. Yeah, then I probably then I probably will not take part in series three, except for maybe okay. the handicap one, because I know that I know in series one, big mistakes. I'm going to catch you on series two with the mistakes on the accessibility part. Okay. Thank mm. you so much, everyone. Thank you, Bye. Douglas. Bye. 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 Take good care. You too.